that's the I thing mean, with the 49ers is, yes, they have all the talent in the world. You have these expectations for them that, you know, on paper they should be able to reach, but then you never know what 49er team you're going to get going into the game. And, and that's that's my fear, right? And But obviously in prime time, it's obvious. They have an opportunity to kind of put the league on notice that, hey, you know, that that game in, in week nine or, or week eight against the Rams was not a fluke. You know, we're here to stay. And that's it's kind of funny. Like, I feel like even uh, national media kind of looks at the 49ers that way, where, like, once if, if they win, even if it is to, you know, the Rams right now, it, everyone starts saying, this is the scariest team. You don't want to see this team, like, in the playoffs. And that that might be true. But, again, they need this game against the Chargers, win convincingly, and – then maybe we can start to have those conversations, right? The last what do you make of that phenomenon, on... though? Real quick, why what? do you what that... do you make of that phenomenon where the Niners win one game, they're back at five hundred, and all of a sudden everyone's ba- like totally sold? Why? Because everyone because everyone knows that that's how talented this team is. It's like okay, like that's true. that's, that's, that's true. what you were supposed to look like, you know. But okay. that's, but and that's true. But I think what people maybe not don't acknowledge nationally is that the issue with this team is coaching and or it has been the first two weeks two months of the season they underperformed they shouldn't be four and four and the reason wasn't the talent the the talent of this team with the schedule they had they should be six and two and they would say so themselves so again if the bye week is what they needed to switch gears and switch from trey to to jimmy and all that cool but the, the issue with this team was never talent it was injuries, preparation, coaching, discipline, consistency, all that stuff. But everyone thinks Kyle's great, and he might be. So you look at talented team, great coach. What could go wrong? They just won a game. But we still this this coaching staff, and it's bigger than Kyle. They lost so many people. They still have questions to answer against teams they don't know well. So far, their pattern is destroy teams they face twice a year. But then against the teams that they don't know from the NFC South or the AFC West, they're like, uh, Mike McDaniel, what do we do? <laughs> I don't know. So that's what it was the first half of the year. Let's see. You you got a bye week. You got two weeks to prepare for a, an injured, poorly coached Chargers team. This yeah. should be a win. This should be a win. It should be yeah. a win. Yeah. I mean, yeah. the last time the 49ers won on Sunday Night Football was in 2020. Uh, but there is some things going for them. I mean – the Chargers, if there's another team who's comparable dealing with injuries as the 49ers, it might be the Chargers. In fact, they might be even worse. Worse? Than- yeah. Yeah, I, would, I would say. Yeah, yeah. I, I would say so. And and they keep on piling. So their right tackle, Trey Pipkins, reaggravated his MCL. He has a chance to play, they, they said, but he is day-to-day. So we'll see what happens there. What's up with um, Herbert and his uh, rib? I think that's been fine for that's some time. That's fine. Now. Okay. I mean, you know. But what's up with I Keenan mean, Allen and his hamstring? He's, you know, he's. Good he, luck. he said he wasn't going to. Yeah, no, he said he was going to come back unless he's 100% because, like, on their bye week, he re aggravated it, which I'm not sure how that happens. Like, what are you doing? That's such a 49ers week? thing to happen. <laughs> the setback during practice. Like, what? How did that? What? 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 Or during a bye week? Yeah. Yes. Oh, excuse me? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, so I mean, yeah, they're they're hurt, and so finally, the 49ers play a team more hurt than than they are. Uh, and the run defense is terrible. The Chargers is it's absolutely terrible. And so you look at this matchup and you think, okay, this should be a favorable matchup for the 49ers. If it, it feels like they found some juice with Christian McCaffrey on offense, that should help them out. And so yeah. just like some of the you know, some of the um, matchups that, that I'm looking here and, and just to, you know, for the video viewers, uh, here are all the injuries that the Chargers have right now. I mean, you see even Joey Bosa on, on IR, a lot of a lot of guys. Uh, but looking at some of the lineups um, and just wanting to see, like, if there's any matchups where I'm like, that, that could be an issue. Like, I don't know, Khalil Mack against McGlinchey. McGlinchey like is also one of those players where I'm like, I never know which McGlinchey I'm gonna get week to week. Um But I mean that's really only an issue if the Niners fall behind. Which they shouldn't yeah, that's fair. That's you fair. know what I'm saying? Like if it's third and nine and they're behind, that's a problem. But 
otherwise, you probably won't even notice Khalil Mack in this game. Yeah. I mean, McGlinchey's a good run blocker, so yeah. and, and this is on nickel. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that's a good point. So, I'm not, you know, on the offensive side of the ball, I'm not too worried. I mean, Derwin James, you know, do we see a Jimmy Garoppolo pick in this game? Because James is, is pretty good on that back end. And it's a good point. I, I, I could definitely see the one. They picked him off in uh, joint pick. practices when I was down there last year. Asante yeah, I mean, Samuel, Derwin, they did. I don't so know. I, I, I he's due that. right because he didn't throw a pick last week. He's due. <laughs> yeah, he he is due right. So I can see that, but you know yeah. that might not be. You know, Forty ers could probably work around again. That, no, they should know? win this game. They they should probably run the ball fifty times in this game. I'm thinking they, they should sh- run the ball fifty times. They they should. You know, could be a Jordan Mason Jordan game, some, Steph. Some screens <laughs> every week, <laughs> waiting for the Jordan Mason game every week. Yeah, no screens too because I don't. No more Debo wide back. I think that's that's done. So more screens. I think so. I think so. You don't. I think you did it out of necessity last year. One, it worked, and two, you needed to do it. Now it doesn't think, work, and two, you don't need to do it. So I think it's done. It's, it, it's too risky. They'll put him in the backfield. You know, as a decoy. To, I love that. Yeah, love that. But then that'll become uh, uh, predictable. You know, oh, sure. you'll be like, okay, it's definitely you know, yeah. McCaffrey. And, and you might get a few touchdowns on the way to it though. To say yeah. It. Oh, oh, for sure they will. I and that's what I'm excited about in the second half of the season. I think what we did see against the Rams that I think goes beyond, you know, all of the issues that the 49ers had in them being able to turn that around. I think we saw how uh, how Christian McCaffrey was able to get integrated into the offense so yeah. seamlessly. Yeah. Nine days with the team, and you're able to do that? Like, yeah. okay, I'm ready to see more. <laughs> so, Yeah, um, absolutely. I think that's definitely going to be a factor in this game. I mean, obviously, along with a lot of the, you know, reinforcements that they're expected to get as well. Yeah.